In this video, we will be exploring accumulations of change. We will be looking at a few examples and then doing some AP style multiple choice questions. The first example says water fills a pool at a rate of two gallons per minute. After 12 minutes, how many gallons of water have been added to the pool? This one is a really, really easy example that we're starting with, but I included this one just so we can get a feel for how these problems might look. So all we need to do is multiply two gallons per minute by 12 minutes. And one important thing to notice is that our units are going to cancel. So when we multiply two gallons over minutes times 12 minutes, those minutes cancel and we are left with 24 gallons. Let's take a look at what this would look like graphically. On the x-axis, we have time in minutes, and on the y-axis, we have the rate in gallons per minute. The rate is always two gallons per minute, and we're being asked after 12 minutes how many gallons of water have been added to the pool. So another way that we can look at this problem, we are trying to find the area under this curve. It's not really a curve even, it's just a straight line. We're trying to find the area under the curve up until 12 minutes, from zero to 12 minutes. So what we can do is multiply the minutes by the gallons per minute, so 12 times two, which is 24 gallons. The next example says water fills a pool at a rate measured in gallons per minute given by the graph below. So they're giving us the same exact type of graph that they were giving us before. And it's the same question as well. After 12 minutes, how many gallons of water have been added to the pool? The only thing is that our graph looks a little bit different. So we can see that we have gallons per minute on the y-axis and minutes on the x-axis. If we were to multiply those two, if we multiply gallons per minute times minutes, we will be left with gallons. And it's asking us how many gallons of water have been added to the pool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark from zero to 12. I need to find the area under this curve from zero to 12. And that will give me the number of gallons that have been added after 12 minutes. So here I'm just going to use my very basic geometry skills. I'm going to use area of a triangle is one half base times height. So one half times eight times four, which is 16. And then over in this section, we will have to do four times one, which is just four for that area. And then one half base times height again for this triangle. The base is three units and the height is three units. So this will be 4.5. And then we just add all of those together. So our answer here is 24.5 gallons. A particle moves in a straight line. Its velocity v of t in meters per second in relation to time t in seconds is shown in the graph below. Along the x-axis we have seconds and along the y-axis we have meters per second. Part A says after six seconds how far away is the particle from its starting point? So what is the displacement of the particle? Now I don't want you to freak out when you see this notation. This is integral notation but we're going to go over exactly what this means. This simply means Find the area under the curve of v of t, under the v of t curve, from time equals 0 to time equals 6. That is all that this notation means. So when we look from 0 to 6, which is right there, we're going to find the area under that curve. And we're just going to have to use basic geometry skills here. To find the area of this semicircle, we know that the area of a regular circle is pi r squared. So it's going to be pi r squared over 2 for the area of the semicircle. The radius is 2, so 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi. Then to find the area of the triangle, we do 1 half base times height, so 1 half times 2 times 4, or just 4. Now when we're looking at a graph and it's going both above and below the x-axis, we're going to have what's called positive and negative space. Positive space is when the graph is above the x-axis, so this would be considered positive space, and this would be considered positive space. The stuff under the x-axis, though, is going to be considered negative space. So when we have negative space in our graph, it simply means that we subtract that instead of adding it. So up in this example, we did 16 plus 4.5 plus 4. In this example, however, because 4 is in the negative space, we're going to do 2 pi minus 4. So the answer here is 2 pi minus 4. That is how far the particle is away from its starting point. And we should also include units here. We had meters per second and we multiplied by seconds, which means that the units are going to be meters. Part B says, after 14 seconds, how far away is the particle from its starting point? And we see this integral notation again here. This is asking us, what is the area under the curve of V of t from 0 to 14, from x equals 0 to x equals 14? So when we go from 0 to 14, we've already found some of the area here. I'm just going to go ahead and find the rest of the area using my geometry skills. Finding this area of the square, 4 times 4, that will be 16, and then finding the area of this triangle, the area is 1 half base times height. The base is 4 and the height is 4, so the area will be 8 there. And keep in mind that we are going to subtract all of this negative space from the 2 pi. So our answer will be 2 pi minus 28 meters. 
Part C says, after 14 seconds, what is the total distance the particle has traveled? There is a slight difference between this one and part B. Part B is asking about the displacement. How far is the particle from its starting point? So that is taking into account the positive and the negative space. But in part C, when it's just asking for the total distance that the particle is traveled, it doesn't matter whether the particle is traveling forward or backward, so whether the space is positive or negative. So it's just saying essentially add up all of these areas. Don't take into account that this is negative because distance traveled is different from displacement. Therefore, the total distance the particle has traveled after 14 seconds will be 2 pi plus 4 plus 16 plus 8, or 2 pi plus 28, and then our unit here is meters. In chapters 2, 3, 4, and 5, we were given information about the original function, and then we were asked questions about its derivative. So they would say, here is the function of f, go find f prime, go find f prime at a specific point, find the slope of the tangent line, the equation of the tangent line, tons of things like that. However, in chapter six, we will be given the derivative and then asked questions about the original function. So we're doing everything in reverse. And this on a very basic level is what integration is. If we take a look at these examples that we were working through before, we see that they always gave us a rate. Water fills a pool at a rate of two gallons per minute. Water fills a pool at a rate given by the graph below. In this example, it talked about velocity. It gave us information about velocity and then asked us questions about the position function. So going from the derivative to the original function. This is what we are going to be doing in this chapter. Let's practice with a multiple choice example. The graph shows the velocity v of a particle in miles per hour on the interval from 0 to 10, where t is measured in hours. Which of the following best estimates the distance traveled by the particle from 2 hours to 9 hours? So we can look at the units here to help us a little bit, because it's asking what is the distance traveled, so how many miles did the particle travel? We know that this axis will be in hours, the x-axis is hours, and the y-axis is in miles per hour. So to get it to just miles, we can multiply these together, so finding the area underneath here. But we're not looking all the way from 0 to 10, we are only looking from 2 to 9. And now we need to estimate the area. So first I will estimate the area, or I will calculate the area of this trapezoid right here. The area for a trapezoid is height times base 1 plus base 2 over 2. And the trapezoid is going to be a sideways trapezoid here, meaning that the height will be 3 and the bases will be 8 and 2. The area under here is going to be 15 units. And then this is going to be a bit trickier because we have a parabola here and we can't find the exact area right now using just geometry skills. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to approximate the area. I'm going to sketch a shape that I can do, which is going to be another trapezoid here. And I'm going to find the area of this trapezoid here. So again, area is equal to the height times base 1 plus base 2 over 2. The height will be 3, base 1 will be 2, and base 2 will be 6. So the approximate area there will be 12. And lastly, I will find the area of this trapezoid. Its area will be 1 times base 1 plus base 2. Base 1 appears to be a little bit more than 6, probably 6.5. Base 2 is exactly 6, all over 2. This means that the area underneath this trapezoid would be 6.25. So then we just need to go through and add up all three of these. This is equal to 33.25 which is closest to answer choice D. And since it was asking for an estimate, it's perfectly fine that it doesn't exactly line up. The graph of the piecewise linear function F is shown. What is, and then what this really means is what is the area under the curve of F of X from X equals negative one to X equals eight. So this is X equals negative one, and this is X equals eight, and we need to find the area under this curve, taking into account positive and negative space. So first I'm going to use my geometry skills, find the area of this triangle right here. The area will be equal to one half the base times the height. The base is five, the height is two, so the area here will be five. And then I'm going to find the area of this long and skinny triangle here. Base is two, height is six, area will be six. And then to find the area of this shape right here, that's a trapezoid, so I'm going to use my formula for the area of a trapezoid, which is the height times base one plus base two over two. Now the way that we're looking at this, this is going to be kind of a sideways trapezoid. So this will be our height and this will be base one and base two. So our height is two, base one is six and base two is four. So the area of that section will be 10. Now we just need to add up our positive and negative space. 
So 5 minus 6 minus 10, that will be negative 11. So B is the correct answer. The rate at which people enter a mall is given by R of T, where R is measured in people per hour and T is measured in hours after 9 a.m. The graph of R of T is shown. So they are showing us this graph of the rate. On the y-axis, it's going to be people per hour. And on the x-axis, it's going to be hours. At 9 a.m., 120 people were already in the mall. This is going to be an important fact for later. At 4 p.m., how many people are in the mall? We need to find how many additional people entered or left the mall between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. So if 0 is 9 a.m., 1 will be 10 a.m., 2 will be 11 a.m., 3 will be 12, 4, 1, 5, 2, 6, 3, 7, 4. So 7 is going to be 4 p.m. So we need to find the area all the way from 0 to 7, the area under the curve here. So I'm just going to use my basic geometry formulas again. I'm going to be doing a lot of trapezoids and triangles in this example. First, I'm going to find the area of this trapezoid. The area is equal to the height, which is 2, times base 1, 50, plus base 2, 70, over 2. So 2 times 60, which is 120. So this area right here is 120. And then for this trapezoid, the height is 1 times base 1, which is 70, plus base 2, which is 90, all over 2. That will be 80 units squared. And then this triangle, the area is equal to 1 half the base times the height. The base is 3 and the height is 90. 270 divided by 2 is 135. Lastly, we need to take into account this little bit of negative space right here. It's another triangle, so we will do 1 times 30 which is 30, divided by 2 is 15. And at this point, we can start adding everything up. So the total area under this curve will be 120 plus 80 plus 135 minus 15. And that will get us the number of people that have entered the mall between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. This is 320. However, since it's asking for how many people are in the mall at 4 p.m., and we know that 120 people were already in the mall at 9 a.m. before this graph even started, we need to add 120 to our answer here. This will produce 440, which matches with answer choice D.